You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, this is a question that I've gotten recently more than any other question. Can you speak on the legality of Donald Trump mounting a write-in campaign if he's disqualified from the ballot? Yeah, great question. I, I think the best answer, even though there is no definitive answer because no court has ever had to wrestle with this question before, I think the best answer is it might technically violate one or more federal laws, but I think it's very unlikely you would see him prosecuted for it. Why do I say it might violate one or more federal laws? If there has been a ruling by a court that Donald Trump is disqualified from holding public office, that doesn't necessarily mean he is disqualified from urging people to vote for him, right? Even if he gets a whole bunch of people writing in his name, if he's constitutionally ineligible from holding office, well, then those votes would basically be thrown away. It would be all for naught. OK, let's back it up, though. If he is not eligible to hold office and he is urging people to vote for him to you know, make him a write in candidate, might that violate uh, our nation's election laws? It might. Might it represent a conspiracy to defraud the American voters? It might. Remember, one of the four charges that he stands indicted for right now in Washington, D.C., is for uh, engaging in a conspiracy to deprive the American voters of essentially the full value of their vote. I could see an argument based on that federal statute that if you're out there campaigning and urging the American voters to put your name on the ballot, even though you can't hold office, I think there's an argument that you're involved in a conspiracy to deprive the American people of the full value of their vote. Now, Brian, there are other laws that might be violated, wire fraud, or if he used the mail to send anything out in furtherance of this scheme to have people write him in. It could be mail fraud, wire fraud, and mail fraud basically just involve using the wires, which today is the internet, right? Electric communica electronic communications, or using the mail in furtherance of a scheme to defraud another. So I could see in theory, Donald Trump urging people to write him in as a candidate for president during an election, if a court had previously um, said he is constitutionally disqualified from holding that office, I could see that technically violating one or more federal laws. I think a novel prosecution might be really difficult to break. Okay, but just to clarify here, these section three of the 14th Amendment claims aren't just about whether or not he's allowed on the ballot. It's about whether or not he's constitutionally allowed to hold office, correct? It is about whether he is constitutionally eligible to hold office. So it would actually be a little bit of a stretch, in my opinion, of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to back it up, to say, you know what? He shouldn't even be constitutionally allowed to be on a primary ballot, for example, because that's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says he might be constitutionally disqualified from holding office. Let me read something really quickly that Judge Neil Gorsuch wrote 10 years ago now when he had to confront this issue on whether a state can put somebody on a primary ballot if that person is constitutionally disqualified from ultimately holding office. And I think a really interesting question, perhaps even a fun question is, will Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch agree with what Judge Neil Gorsuch ruled 10 years ago. Here's what he ruled in a similar case. He said, a state's legitimate interest in protecting the integrity and practical functioning of the political process permits it, permits the state to exclude from the ballot candidates who are constitutionally prohibited from assuming office. If we tease out that language, what is he saying? Well, if he's constitutionally prohibited from holding office, then the states ought to be able to keep his name off the ballot entirely. Why? Because that is one step in the direction of holding office. But here is the caveat or the footnote that I have to throw in there. This is Gorsuch talking about the state rules, the state procedures, and the state laws. Where we find ourselves right now, Brian, is the 50 states are all over the map 
pun right. intended. There. The 50 states are all over the place with respect to whether Trump should be disqualified from the primary ballot or maybe the general ballot. Maybe he shouldn't be disqualified at all. And that is exactly what our system contemplates. Why? Because our constitutional system of government says the states get to run their own state elections, even for federal office. So frankly, the states have passed all kinds of different laws. They've promulgated all kinds of different election regulations. So it's not a surprise that they're kind of all over the map on this one. But that was Judge Gorsuch saying, you know what? States have a right to make their own election laws and promulgate their own election regulations. Therefore, a state should be able to keep somebody off the primary ballot if that person ultimately is disqualified from holding the office they seek. Of course, we've seen before when these judges have said one thing, uh, you know, during their confirmation hearings, for example, like how how uh, how committed they were to the to the whole concept of precedent, only to then kind of turn that on its head once they actually became justices. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens, and and we'll see pretty soon uh, with regard to this specific question. And to that exact point, we have now had two states that have disqualified Donald Trump from the ballot, both in Maine and Colorado. At this point, is it not imperative that the Supreme Court rule on this? question or else risk there being some type of electoral crisis because the rulings are so scattershot. It is imperative unless the Supreme <clears throat> Court decides this is a state's rights issue. Where have we heard that before? The Supreme Court not too long ago revoked women's constitutional privacy rights to make their own reproductive health decisions. Why? They said it's a matter for the states. We have to turn those decisions back to the states, let the states make their own laws. Well, interestingly, the Constitution provides that running elections is a state function, not a federal function. So could it be the Supreme Court will say, yeah, we're actually going to show some allegiance to the Constitution and let the states run their own elections and let them decide who is and is not disqualified from being on the ballot. But again, Brian, that would require consistency from the Supreme Court justices. So let's go to your question. Will the Supreme Court exercise jurisdiction mm -hmm. and probably do so urgently? Yes, they probably will because they, they undoubtedly are going to wanna put out one definition of what section three of the 14th amendment means and whether Donald Trump is disqualified or is not disqualified. But here's what I think is really important to keep in mind. There have already been three factual determinations that Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. And on appeal, the appellate mantra in our appellate court practice is um, factual determinations are entitled to great deference on appeal by appellate courts, including the Supreme Court. So what do we know? Well, a trial court judge, Sarah Wallace in Colorado, after a trial on the merits, lots of witnesses testified, both fact witnesses and expert witnesses, Judge Wallace found, as a matter of fact, she concluded Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. Then the Supreme Court of Colorado affirmed that factual finding. You also have the Secretary of State of Maine. She has the obligation under Maine's state election laws to hold a hearing on the question of whether a particular candidate is disqualified. She held that hearing and she concluded that the evidence proves Donald Trump engaged in insurrection and in there and therefore is disqualified from appearing on the main ballot. So you have multiple factual findings. Those factual findings will be part of the record that goes up to the Supreme Court. And if they're honest brokers of the law, they will be bound by those factual findings. And really all that will be left for them to determine is is the office of the presidency an office? Kind of feels like it is. <laughs> yeah. And if so, yeah, call me crazy. That's not exactly a stretch. Yeah. And if so, Donald Trump should be disqualified from holding office again. So, yes, I suspect they're going to take it up. I suspect they're going to resolve it very quickly, just like they resolved matters quickly back in 1974 when things were hanging in the balance because of Richard Nixon's illegal conduct. And then I suspect they're going to send it back out to the states and the states will probably feel obligated to sort of decide their issues now 
with respect to whether to put Donald Trump on their ballot or keep Donald Trump off their ballot in light of whatever it is the Supreme Court interprets the 14th Amendment to me. Okay. And obviously, we'll stay on top of that as soon as we have any updates. Again, we are on Supreme Court watch right now. We expect this ruling to be handed down any day now, given given how uh, how soon this has to be decided, because these ballots have to be printed and uh, and these these primaries are fast approaching. So with that said, as soon as we have any updates, we'll bring them to you. If you're not yet subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.